Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today I have an example of classic Feynman integration, and what I mean by that is just the basic sort of, of Feynman integration that involves reparameterizing the integral, differentiating with respect to the parameter, finding a convenient value of that derivative that makes the resulting integral easy to solve, um, and then reintegrating to get back to your original parameter um, and using uh, known values to solve for c. Um, if you've watched some of my earlier videos, most of them were classic Feynman integration, so I thought I'd do another one of those. I know a lot of my uh, recent videos have been a little bit complicated, and maybe the answers aren't to some people's liking. Um, specifically when I express the answer in the form of an infinite sum. A lot of people don't like that. They don't find it very satisfying. I, I, I like it personally because all an infinite sum is, it's just arithmetic. It basically breaks that integral down into a form that you can um, get a very good approximation for very, very easily. But anyway, enough of that. Let's just get on with the video. So... Since this is classic Feynman integration, the first step is to reparameterize it. Um, I always choose the parameter t. So you can see that um, the reparameterization uh, involves replacing this squared with a t and also this constant multiple in front of the natural log x with a t. All right. And then we'll notice that if we evaluate our f of t at the point t is equal to 0, we get x to the 0, which is 1, minus 0, minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. That evaluates to 0. And if we plug in 2 for t, we just get back our original integral. All right, so that's nice. Next step. We differentiate with respect to t under the integral signs. That just means we take the partial with respect to t of this integrand and leave the rest alone, and that will give us f prime of t. And you can see that I did that right here. Taking the derivative of this will recover a natural log x. Taking the, the derivative of this will just leave a natural log x. So this is what we end up with natural log x, x to the t, minus natural log x, over natural log squared x from 0 to 1, dx. And you can see that uh, we have a common factor of natural log x in the numerator and denominator, so those will cancel out, giving us nothing but this integral right here. And I actually um, solved, uh, or this, this integral came up as... Um, a reparameterization of another integral that I did way, way back when I first started this channel. Um, but anyway, now we have f prime of t is equal to that integral. All right, so let's notice that f prime at 0, again, is equal to 0. So now we know f at 0 is 0, and f prime at 0 is 0. All right. Let's take another derivative with respect to t. So we have f prime of t represented by this integral. Let's use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign one more time. Again, all we have to do is take the partial with respect to the parameter, in this case t, um, and leave the rest alone. So we have f double prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t dx, and that's easy to evaluate. That's just the antiderivative evaluated at the bounds. So we'd have x to the t plus 1 over t plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 1, and that will just give us 1 over t plus 1. So we have f double prime of t. Well, now we have to go backwards. We have to integrate to get back to f of t. In fact, we have to integrate twice. So we integrate f prime of f double prime of t to get back to f of t. All right, and on this side, we just have the integral of 1 over t plus 1 dt. Well, that evaluates the natural log of t plus 1. But then we have this constant of integration. So we're going to have to use the fact that we know f prime at 0 is equal to 0 to figure this out. Sorry. Okay. So we know that f prime of 0 is equal to 0. Well, that means it's equal to natural log of 
0 plus 1 plus c. Natural log 0 plus 1 is natural log 1, which is 0. That implies 0 is equal to 0 plus c, which means c is equal to 0. All right, so we know that this c is equal to 0, so we have our final um, expression for f prime of t. All right, well, we integrate one more time to get back to f of t, because that's what we want, because then we just plug in 2 and we have our answer. All right, again, f of t is equal to the antiderivative of f prime of t, which is natural log t plus 1. So f of t is equal to the integral of natural log t plus 1. And now this is not, I mean, this is... You need uh, u substitution and integration by parts to solve this integral. I'm not going to show it. Uh, anybody watching this channel is more than likely able to do that one fairly easily, so I won't show that. That's equal to t plus 1, quantity t plus 1, times natural log of t plus 1, and then all of that minus c, uh, t, and then plus c. Again, uh, from way back up at the top, at the very beginning, we know that f evaluated at 0 is equal to 0. So again, we can use that. So we have f of 0 is equal to 0, which is equal to this expression where t is 0. That's this. Well, we'll notice that this entire thing will cancel out because we just have a natural log 1 here, which is 0, times t is 0, minus 0. So it's all 0. So 0 is equal to 0 plus c. Um, well, it's equal to minus 0 plus c, but whatever. That means that c is equal to 0. So um, that means f of t is just equal to this expression right here. And we're almost done. So we have f of t is equal to t plus 1 natural log t plus 1 minus t. And, we, and, and now we're done. We just plug in 2 because remember, we already determined that f of 2 is equal to our original integral. So we just now plug in 2 into that expression and we have our answer i is equal to f of 2, we already knew that, that's equal to 2 plus 1 times the natural log of 2 plus 1, and then minus 2. So, as our final answer, this is what we have. We have i is equal to this integral right here, and that evaluates to 3 natural log 3 minus 2. There you go, guys, there's a little break from the uh, complicated stuff I've been doing. Again, this was just a classic, um, a classic example of Feynman integration used in its most basic form. Well, not most basic. We did have to differentiate and reintegrate twice, but this was very straightforward. This is the, the standard Feynman integration technique. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.